So this morning, in the Scripture, we see Jesus doing a lot. Right? He's up all night healing people. And in the morning, He gets up very early and goes out. And then He goes out through all of Galilee spreading the Gospel message. <clears throat> and have you ever noticed that there are people in your life, <clears throat> people in your life, that get way too much done for the 24 hours that exist compared to you. I have a person in my life like that who every time I talked to her was like, you did that and that and that and that and, you know, taking care of your house and everything else. But what makes these people tick? What makes people like Jesus go out into the world and do and do and do and do and do and do more and more every day. It comes down to the 80-20 rule or the Pareto principle. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Or if you're a customer service, 20% of the people take up 80% of your time. We're all familiar with that kind of math, right? That is actually a natural law that repeats itself in nature, the 80-20 rule. I read a thing about it. Don't know enough about it to tell you about it. Just trust me. The thing said it is the, it's in nature. So the 80-20 rule is a natural law. It's just something that happens. At your work, I'm sure most of you just thought of, well, that's an 80, that's a 20 percenter, that's an 80 percenter. And you can tell who's doing all the work. That's in the real world, in the laws of nature. Over here is in the kingdom of God. And this place is the perfect example of the Pareto principle gone completely wrong. Because 20% of the people don't do 80% of the work. You see, just today, Denise got cups. Ashley was designing a, a new front of the house, which looks awesome, by the way. It's fine. It's fine. It looks awesome. Everybody is doing something. There was a group of people that went out and did yard work last Saturday that Gary took an awesome video of. And everywhere you look, our people are being the hands and feet. That's not natural law. That's kingdom law. And we get there because of, like I told the kids, where your focus is. Now, I want to go through Jesus' day uh, according to Mark real quick. Now, if you've read the Gospel of Mark, you may have noticed that Mark has a favorite word. It is immediately. Everything in the Gospel of Mark happens immediately. So we're talking here. He goes, you know, he gets baptized by John the Baptist. Then he goes out and he calls his first disciples. And after he first calls uh, two, he goes and walks, I don't know, 15 feet and calls two more. And then immediately they went to Capernaum and he entered a synagogue and talked. And then all that night, then he went to, to Simon Peter's house healed his mother-in-law, and then that night, the whole city came to his door, and he was healing and casting out demons. The whole city. That had to take a while, right? Like it says it started after sunset. I'm assuming the city is at least, what, 50, 60 people? Like that's a lot of work. So what time did he go to bed? Like if we had his Google calendar up here, like what would his schedule look like? Jesus' <laughs> schedule is crazy. But what he does right after this is what I want to talk about. After he was up all night serving, helping people, he gets up in the morning while it was still very dark. And he went out to a desert place and there he prayed. So you see Jesus and where he puts his focus first thing in the morning. He goes out, gets up, goes out to a deserted place. Now, I have to say a little caveat here because there are two types of people. There are morning people like my wife, Minnie, and Jack. They wake up, their eyes are bright, they're ready to go for the day, they're talking real loud, everything's ready to go, make some noise in the kitchen, they're ready to go. Bonnie and I need to walk around and yawn for a little while and kind of get some... It takes me about an hour to wake up, Right? You may be like that. You may have to wake up and go straight to work. You may have to wake up and take care of little kids. But there is some point in the morning when you are awake. 
And my suggestion to you is to take that time and give it to God. Now, in a perfect world, I would wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, help make breakfast, get my, get my kids ready for school, be a loving father and encouraging and get them in the car and drive them to school. And before that, maybe even have some prayer time, right? That's not what happens in my house. I wake up at 7 o'clock. We're in the car by 7.10, 7.15, and we're driving to school. And then I see them after. But when I get home, that's when my morning starts. And that's when I go through my routine, which this sermon is as much for me as it is for anybody else because my morning routine right now is not great. It's definitely not Jesus' morning routine. But what I try to do is do some reading, read out of the Bible, or read a couple more devotionals. I do my uh, yearly Bible study. And then what I've added and what I want to talk about and what I think I can read into what Jesus was doing is a spiritual discipline. Now, prayer is different for everybody. Some people think prayer is talking a whole bunch and hoping that God does what you tell him to do. I've prayed like that. We've probably all prayed like that. There's the prayers where you're just asking, 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 asking. There's the prayers where you're just praising. But the prayer that I found works best for me right now is complete silence and stillness. I am not a still person. This is hard for me. But I've tried Lecto Divina. I've tried Walking a Labyrinth. I've tried all of these different kinds of spiritual practices to try and get closer to God and to still myself so that I can feel close to God. Be still and know that He is God. And just in the last week, I've discovered that just being physically still allows me to feel that closeness. Because I am not a person that can turn off my mind. Some people apparently can. This doesn't shut off. And once I accepted that and was giving my physical stillness to God and saying, look, this is your time. I am here with you. And being silent and physically still, I have never felt closer or heard from God more than when I am constantly practicing that still practice. And my encouragement for you is find something that works in the morning. It may be reading your daily devotional. It may be reading the Bible app. It may be listening to worship music. It may be a prayer. It may be a song. It may be anything. But in the morning, you have a choice to make. Either you can choose to be about you and the things that you want. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm tired. It's cold. The kids are being loud. Did I mention I was tired? And I'm also hungry and cold. And it's all about me. That's, that day is going to go a certain way. Right? You're not going to have a great day when you've focused on yourself. But when you put it to God and you say, Good morning, Lord. This is your day. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. I've got a big old to-do list of stuff to do. But if your priorities are different than mine, I'd much rather do your, your to-do list. But if you could help me do mine too, that'd be great. That's a different kind of day. Because you're putting your focus on what you want to see, the person that you want to be, and the world that you want to live in. The mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. To transform the world, you have to start with yourself. And the best way to transform yourself is to give yourself away to God and say, you know what? I'm not handling this really well. I shouldn't be in charge of me. I tell my kids all the time, the best and worst part about being an adult is you can eat whatever you want and you can go to sleep whenever you want. It's the worst part because nobody tells you, don't do that. Stop. <laughs> nobody that you're going to listen to tells you to stop and don't do that. Yeah, what time did you go to bed last night? Uh-huh. <clears throat> but you... Uh, yeah, two cars. But in the morning, you have a choice. You can choose Jesus... You can choose love. You can choose to put your focus on God. Or you can choose not to. But I promise you, you will be better prepared to deal with what comes during your day if your focus starts on God.
Because right after Jesus goes out to pray, it says Simon and his companions hunted for him. Can you imagine what Simon and his companions felt like when they woke up and there was no Jesus? I woke up this morning and my cross was gone. It had fell out in Jack's bed last night. And it was kind of, oh no. Can you imagine waking up? You went to sleep next to Jesus and wake up and he's not there? You're going to hunt for him too. And he goes and he finds him and he says, Jesus, everyone is searching for you. Now I ask you, have you ever showed up to work and everyone was searching for you? Or you had a thing that you were supposed to do? Or you show up to a family event and did you bring the macaroni and cheese? Did you do that? It's all this stuff in life that can bombard you and change your attitude about life. And he says, everyone is searching for you. And Jesus answered, this is after spending time alone with God and praying. Jesus answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. He got the vision in the morning in silence. And nothing can tear him off that mission because its foundation is built on God and love and prayer and silence with God. So how are you going to deal with the distractions that come up? Are you going to be focused on God first? Or are you going to just let let your life fly by the seat of its pants and hope for a good outcome? Oh, got you. That's not the best way to live. Amen? Amen. Put your focus on God and you will see God. You will see God in people. You will see God in actions. You will see God in music and song. You will see God everywhere because God is everywhere. As soon as we turn our minds to that, we get to see it. So I want to give you this. We wrote, we, we wrote a song. Yay. Uh, well, kind of. I kind of stole part of it and then wrote the rest of it. But the, the big part of it is, good morning, Lord. This is your day. If you can go the next two days, two days, Monday and Tuesday, and wake up and say that, I think that your days will go better. I think that you'll feel closer to God. And I think that you will find yourself loving a little bit more. Because in the morning, when we rise, we choose Jesus. Amen? Amen.